Good day, grade sevens. Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuned into the second and final EMS lesson for term four. Can you believe it? This is your last lesson for the year. In this lesson, we will be wrapping up the concept of savings. My name is Buitumelo Diale, and this is my contribution to Tumamina Teaching. So let's start at the beginning and take a look at the history of banks. So the history of banks and the history of money can be linked to one another. People began to experience problems with other people stealing their money and therefore looked for a place to safeguard their money. Let's say you wanted to buy a house for 800,000 Rand and you start saving money for it, but you hide it under your pillow. Imagine someone steals your money. This is why banks play such a very important role in safeguarding our money. The first bank, as we know it today, developed in Italy in the 14th century. Since then, the roles of banks have evolved. Banks are not just used for safeguarding our money, no. They have a variety of roles to play. But before we take a closer look at the roles that the banks play, Let's quickly play a game. Let's see who of you, grade sevens, know the different banks of our beloved country, South Africa. Quickly pause this video and write down as many banks of South Africa that you can think of. Let's see who can identify the most banks. Once you've written all your answers, your teacher will come around to check those answers and as we all know our teachers have chocolates and sweeties in the drawer and they are very generous so write as many as you can so that if you have the most banks written that are correct then you will get a sweetie or two and who of you got the most correct answers can see that hand going up well done all right grade seven so we've identified the different banks of south africa i want us to take a closer look at a very special bank the reserve bank of south africa we're now going to ask our vr pilot to show us where the reserve bank of south africa is hi learners so we are going to visit the south african reserve bank um, there are a few offices, but the main office is located in Pretoria. I'm flying towards it now. And just a reminder, why are we doing this? We would like you to know where things are geographically and start to get acquainted with where are these important landmarks in our country. So I am going to fly over to the Reserve Bank. Let me just change the angle. And as you can see, this is Pretoria Central. A lot of big buildings, but this building over here, this is the South African Reserve Bank. The main offices. And we can have a quick street view just to get that angle. As you can see, that's how it looks like. And checking the street view, massive building very prominent building in Pretoria. And there we have it. Back to you guys. The Reserve Bank is a central bank of South Africa. Their role is specifically to control the supply of money to issue or destroy new banknotes. But more of this in high school. For now, grade sevens, the most important thing for you to remember is that the Reserve Bank of South Africa regulates and monitors all the commercial banks of South Africa. Let's have a look at the role of banks. Banks give businesses and individuals an opportunity to save money and to borrow money from them. If businesses and individuals choose to borrow money, they will need to pay interest. However, if they choose to save money, they will earn interest on their savings. Banks also provide individuals and businesses with services. Let's take a look. 
Banks keep our money safe. It is much safer to put your money in a bank account than to hide it under your pillow at home. Banks also provide mobile and internet banking services so that we don't have to physically go to the bank. You can simply make a payment wherever you are, whenever you want to. We can open and close our accounts with banks and we can also view our bank balances to see how much money we have in our bank account. And can you believe it? Banks can even help you with financial planning, retirement planning, as well as setting up your will. As we've already mentioned, banks also loan money to their clients and they also actually help you with setting up your loans. Banks also have ATMs where we can deposit money or withdraw money at any given time of the day. Grade sevens, it is important to remember that at the end of the day, commercial banks are businesses and they also want to make money. How do they make their money? They charge bank fees for the services that they provide to us, as well as charge interest on the money that we borrow from them. We are now going to take a look at the different types of bank accounts. Let's take a closer look at two basic accounts that encourage savings. Your savings account as well as your current account. Both these accounts are for daily use and the cash is made available immediately. In the past, a current account was called a check account. But seeing that checks don't exist anymore, the name has changed to a current account. These two accounts are not the only accounts, but for now, I'm only going to mention just a few, seeing that you learn more about them when you get to high school next year. These other accounts include investment accounts, such as a fixed deposit and unit trust. With these investment accounts, you will receive more interest than your ordinary savings accounts. There are different accounts for when you want to borrow money from the bank. This can be a home loan, also known as a mortgage loan, or a credit card. Remember that loans are opposite of savings. When you put money into the bank, you receive interest. And when you borrow money from the bank, you pay interest. Sometimes people don't have enough money in their bank accounts to buy either a house or a car and therefore they borrow money to pay for those items. It is important that you do not borrow more than you can pay back. So always make sure that you have enough money to pay back the money that you have borrowed. All right, let's take a look at the process of opening a bank account. Who of you have a savings account? Please raise your hand. Some of you may have raised your hands and others not. For those of you who have raised their hands, you have a bank account simply because your parents went and opened a bank account on your behalf. And for those of you who do not have an account, do not worry. When you turn 18 one day, you can head to the bank and open a bank account for yourself. When you finally turned 18 and you are ready to open a bank account, remember to take your ID as well as your proof of address with you because those are the two documents that banks require in order for you to open a bank account. If you're planning to open a bank account sooner, your parents will do that on your behalf and they will need to take your birth certificate as well as a proof of address to open the bank account on your behalf. After you've opened your bank account, you will receive a card and you can do whatever it is that you want with that card. You can withdraw money, you can deposit money, you can make online purchases, buy some clothes or even some delicious treats that you've been craving. But remember, we do not spend too much money on unnecessary things. Our aim is to... Exactly, our aim is to say, there you have it. Students, and you know what's the good thing about having a bank account and a card that you can use? Well, you no longer have to carry so much cash with you when you move around. And that simply means that you can keep your money safe and this reduces the risk of losing it. And just like that, students, we have come to the end of this lesson. In fact, 
the end of the entire series. I can only hope that you have learned a lot about financial literacy throughout the year and that you're not just well equipped for your upcoming exams, but you feel like you can make real sound decisions for the rest of your life. That being said, I have no doubt whatsoever that you are well equipped to make better informed financial decisions because you know better. Great sevens, that's it from my side. I wish you all the best for your upcoming exams. Remember that it is never too late to get back up, but rather too early to give up. 